Welcome back to the WSU News Show. I'm Sawyer Price. I'm Haley Morrison, and we're bringing you reliable news right here from Central South Carolina. Haley, how are you doing today? I'm good, Sawyer. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Well, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the first story on thrift shopping. Delaney Byers is reporting on the possible benefits for thrift shopping. Thrift stores have been around for over 100 years and have now become a $14.4 billion industry. Thrift shopping has always been appealing to young people looking for an affordable way to add to their wardrobe. College students especially find thrift shopping not only inexpensive, but a fun activity to enjoy with friends. I enjoy thrift shopping because it's something fun you can do. You can do it anytime. You can go with your friends and there's a lot of cool things that you can find. Um, it is something that we all enjoy. We do go a lot. You can just go whenever. Thrift shopping is also economically friendly because it involves recycling clothes and used items. Um, I'm like a new uh, cruelty-free person. I like I'm very interested in all that, so a lot of stores, like the really big name brands, they have sweatshops in like third world countries and I don't like that. So I think with thrift shopping you can find things that have already been made so you don't have to go to those big name brands. Thrifting is a great way to find name brand shirts just like this and the one that I'm wearing. Well, I don't really thrift shop, but... I have been interested in thrift shopping, mainly because, you know, they, you can get some good stuff, some good brands and all that for cheap. And it doesn't matter if it's expensive. It's the same brand, but cheap. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. This is Delaney Byers reporting. Thanks, Delaney. That could be useful to many of our students. On the topic of usefulness, Brian Roach is talking about our devices and how they're becoming more difficult for user upgrades. Technology nowadays is becoming smaller and less upgradable for customers, maybe even costing a premium just to upgrade just to gain a small bit of performance. But are people happy with these changes that are making their devices not changeable? No. I understand why they do it. Um, having set standard specifications makes it easy to optimize programs and, and updates and stuff like that. So you know exactly what hardware stuff's going to be on so it can run well. It is super annoying to have to deal with, though. I guess it's fine. A lot of people don't care, and companies can get away with just making devices that way. Um, I do think it would be more beneficial if you could buy something that could later be upgraded. This shows that most people like the idea of upgradability. So should devices become user upgradable again? Absolutely. Uh, I, I feel like once uh, someone buys something, they should be able to do whatever they want with it. Um, they shouldn't be limited by the manufacturer who makes their own warranty um, and decides what things that that person can and can't do with it. I think that's kind of overreaching. People want to bring back the ability to upgrade their devices to what they need, but it seems that most companies are just making their devices permanently unchangeable. I'm Brian Roach from MC Swoo. Brian just gave us something to think about the next time we invest in new devices. That's right, Haley. Later on, we're going to be talking about a local comic book store and the rise of eSports at colleges. Up next is Ben Wyatt reporting on Central Commerce. Many local residents and students think there's not much to do on the weekend in Central. Ben Wyatt says otherwise. Let's see what he has to say. While different businesses have come and gone, Central's commercially growing and has strong potential for future businesses. In a 2006 survey, residents of Central determined that the downtown area needed better retail selection, appearance improvement, and more food selections. The residents of Central have little to call their own. Because we're so close to Clemson, because we're so close to Easley and Anderson and Greenville, it's easy for residents of Central to go somewhere else. One problem with Central is that many nearby towns are popular destinations. Some new businesses like the Modern Bell Market and Jitters Brewing Company have opened up though, bringing some fresh life to the central area. The dream and the vision is to provide a place for central residents. We want to connect with our neighbors. We want to connect with people who we pass by in the grocery store. The city is also doing its part by stewarding infrastructure and attracting business owners to develop in downtown. We put the town clock in and we made downtown look more inviting. That's part of what our mission is, is to make the, the area more inviting and induce businesses to want to come here. With space to grow, Central is slowly developing its businesses and commercial market. For MC Swoo, this is Ben Wyant reporting. 
Maybe I'll have to visit downtown central this weekend. That's right. You'll never know what you'll find while visiting local businesses. Speaking of, Caitlin Fox is reporting on the preservation of local history. In small towns all across America, there's an unseen battle raging. The battle for preserving local history. Without preserving local history, we do not know who we are, where we came from, and our lives are less meaningful. If we know the story of what happened here, that there was a British skirmish here or an Indian village there, our lives are greatly enhanced. Most residents are unaware of the events that have taken place on the very soil they stand on, much like the lynching of Willie Earl. Uh, Willie Earl was an African American um, and in 1947 uh, he was accused of killing a uh, cab driver from Greenville. Uh, they brought him to the county jail here before he ever had a chance at a trial or anything like that. Uh, a group of 20 to 30 cab drivers from Greenville came over here, forcefully removed him from the jail and took him into Greenville County and, and, and killed him. That set off a kind of a national story. Many people are fighting for preservation of historic items, such as Brad Dover. Well, I think as a city councilman, it is a responsibility for us to attempt to preserve local history in every way that we can. So I think if we save, if we share, and we preserve, you can't go wrong. When wondering about places to visit, don't forget the local museums in your area. I'm Caitlin Fox for MC SWU reporting. Looks like I'm going to take a visit to a local museum here soon. Still ahead, we have the weather and a story on dual sports athletes. Up next, Gratian Schrader is going to talk to us about comic book stores. While many people do their shopping online, comic book stores provide more than a shopping experience. Grayson Schrader is reporting on the community that is built around local comic book stores. Comic book stores can sometimes be few and far between depending on the area. However, they house some of the greatest people and communities you can find. One example is Planet Comics, located in Anderson, South Carolina. It is an independently owned comic book store that has an established community which has developed over the years. I've been visiting Planet Comics for roughly two years now. I guess being from a smaller town, having a comic book store to go to has been pretty important to me. I think the most appealing thing about Planet Comics is just the community and, and friendships and people you get to meet. Usually when I come here, I see a pretty large community all interacting with each other, developing friendships. It's cool to see a community kind of gather around this one place. With the rising popularity in blockbuster comic book films, both new and old fans are taking notice of the store. Well, I would hope personally one of my missions is that we try overall to make it a place where there is no gatekeeping and there is no elitism. And had I had, you know, these movies back then myself, it's exactly how I would have gotten into it. There's so much that it's so easy to find you a place to just tie a rope around your waist and jump in, man. So. If you're ever interested in comics, tabletop games, sci-fi, fantasy, or anything similar, stop by Planet Comics. This is Grayson Schrader, MC SWU. Thanks for that, Grayson. We're going to Tyler Fuller now to learn about a growing activity on college campuses, eSports. Video games have been one of the fastest growing industries in the world, and more people are gaming now than ever before. With this surge of players comes the draw of competition. Today, with games such as Fortnite, Overwatch, League of Legends, and Counter-Strike, we've seen crowds and prize money that would have been unheard of in a gaming tournament, even as little as 10 years ago. Esports, or professional gaming, has, believe it or not, been around since the 1970s. The first esports event ever was held at Stanford University and involved the game Space War. The grand prize for the winner of the competition was a year-long subscription to Rolling Stones magazine. The first video game tournament, the Space Invaders Championship, was held eight years later in 1980 and boasted an attendance of 10,000 people, with the winner of the Fortnite World Cup receiving a payout of over $3 million and competitors in the Overwatch League making yearly salaries of 50 to 100,000 a year. Professional gaming can be an extremely profitable career. Many colleges and universities have hopped on the trend as well, with over 175 institutions having teams in the National Association of Collegiate Esports. Through the Division II level, there's about 50 schools that already have it, and there's actually some in our conference like King College, Emmanuel College, I think Barton has one. Those are all schools that already have like teams set up for a certain sport, like certain uh, games, I should say, for e-gaming and their scholarship base. So if we were to get it, it'd be like us stepping into the conference of e-gaming. Tyler Fuller with MC SWU reporting. With this story, I think it's safe to say that more people will take notice of esports in the upcoming years. 
In a few minutes, Maggie Rice is reporting on Coyote Coffee. Up next, we have Michael Williams with the weather. It's time for our weather forecast with Michael Williams. Michael, what are we looking at for this week? Thanks, Sawyer. Today, you might need a light jacket with a high being 59 degrees. Precipitation is at a 10% chance with winds at 6 miles per hour moving southwest. As we move into the night, expect colder temperatures around 40 degrees. Tomorrow will be mostly sunny with a high of 61. Going into the evening, expect a drop in temperature to around 41 degrees. It looks like the sun is supposed to stay through till Wednesday, so you may want to break out the sunglasses. Temperatures are ranging from 65 to a low 42, so layers are the way to go. Later in the week leading to the weekend, we're looking at a small chance of rain and some light showers Friday with slightly higher temperatures, lows in the 50s, and highs in the mid-60s. Back to you. Sounds like we might need to stay indoors this weekend. Seems like it, Sawyer. Yeah, well, you know, Haley, for this weekend, we definitely could use the rain. Yeah, I guess I'm getting the rain boots out of the closet. And you and me both. <laughs> Let's go to Sawyer reporting on dual sport athletes. The transition into cooler weather can signify the end of college baseball season and any other spring sports, but they don't have to signify the end of sports participation for the year. College sports are a crucial part of a student's growth and development, and nowadays we are beginning to see more and more people play multiple sports. Playing multiple sports can help students improve physical and mental health, empower students with life skills, help students learn discipline and how to manage time, boost self-confidence, improve leadership skills, and also can teach students important life lessons. Really, it like, kind of like makes you more of like a well-rounded person like it teaches you to play with other people and it teaches you to play with like all types of different people so you have one team that may be a much different aspect playing two different sports really just teaches you how to play with a bunch of different people and how it teaches you how to interact with people by playing multiple sports athletes are able to target a variety of muscle groups instead of just one specific muscle group it's really good for injury prevention because those muscles that are getting used repetitively playing one sport are being alleviated because you've got other accessory muscles in that sport that are strong, strong, nice and strong because of another sport you play. If an athlete plays multiple sports, they will develop both skill sets for both sports, making them an overall better athlete. This is Sawyer Price for MC Swoop reporting. Maybe I should pick up another sport. Stick around to hear about the local coffee chain, Coyote Coffee. One local business you could visit this weekend is Coyote Coffee Cafe. Let's go to Maggie Rice to learn more about it. Coyote Coffee is a locally owned coffee shop and cafe boasting three different locations in Powdersville, Pickens, and Easley. I visited the Easley location to see what Coyote had to offer. My experience is mainly just for the coffee, but I do like to come in here and read or get some stuff done. I come here about twice a week. I think the service is great. The people are really friendly. I like the atmosphere because it's really chill. It's decorated cute. It's easy just to hang out at. Um, it's unique because I like the atmosphere and the people are really nice. My favorite thing is probably the white coyote. Coyote rocks a unique southern comfort vibe, perfect for studying or socializing. They offer a variety of quality specialty drinks for you to choose from. And the more I explored, the more I realized that Coyote is a multifaceted business. They have quite the selection of food, and they even offer catering services for all of your event needs. And if you're just interested in a quick stop, they also have a drive through It's really a warm and cozy atmosphere, easy to study, easy to stay focused. I come here more to study. The service is really good, and they're fast and nice. So come by one of their three locations to enjoy some Coyote coffee. Drive through for convenience or stop and stay a while to enjoy the home-like atmosphere along with your coffee. For MC SWU, this is Maggie Rice reporting. Sounds like the perfect place to spend a rainy Saturday morning. Don't forget your umbrella if you decide to go out this weekend. I'll try not to since I might head downtown Central and check out the new local businesses. Well, there you have it, folks. That's all for the W Swoosh Show today. Stay dry and enjoy the weather before it gets too cold outside. I'm Haley Morrison. And I'm Sawyer Price. This is MC Swoop. And as always, stay safe and God bless. There we go.